This is my second of four videos from The Work Truck Show. The first video covered light duty electric pickups and some background. See the link if you missed that one. In this one, I'll cover light duty electric vans and cargo trucks class one, two, and three. Let's get right into it. Starting off very small, Tropos Motors showed a low speed vehicle. Centro also offers an EV like this called the Metro for a variety of applications. LSVs like this are limited to 25 miles per hour by law, but they are allowed to be street legal on roads with a posted limit of up to 35 miles per hour. Now for some real vans, class one. In the US, vehicles like the Ford Transit Connect, Mercedes Metris, Ram Promaster City make up this segment. They are more economical to operate than larger vans if you have small light loads, and they fit better in dense urban areas. Ford has announced that they don't plan to sell the Transit Connect in the U.S. after 2023, <coughs> and Nissan stopped making the NV200. That leaves room for some EVs like Canoe. Canoe intended their vehicle for personal use, but they see an opportunity to sell them as a work truck too. The Canoe LDV has scored some much needed wins for this startup. Walmart placed an order for at least 4,500 delivery vans for their growing home grocery delivery. At the show, they announced that Schindler Elevator will buy 50 of them for repair services. They will be outfitted similar to what you see here at the Holman exhibit. 200 miles of range is very good. Most delivery vans operate in a smallish region. They're not driving long distances. 80 kilowatt hour battery charges reasonably quick when needed. Most fleets charge overnight when they're not being used and electricity is cheaper. It's a smaller class one van, so not a lot of cargo space or payload capacity, but if you need more, you should get a class two van from someone else. A funky van like this may seem odd for work, but I would much rather be seen driving a spaceship like this than our next class one van. <laughs> the Mullen One. Yikes. Mullen is an interesting company who has been acquiring or taking controlling interest in other EV startups. The Mullen One came from a company called ELMS, Electric Last Mile Solutions, who ran into financial problems. They were a SPAC, and like many SPACs do, they disappointed investors and were investigated by the SEC. They planned to import Chinese-made bodies and equip them with an electric drivetrain in Indiana. When Mullen took over, they added a heavy-duty bumper and started assembling them in Mississippi. Smaller battery and less range than the canoe, also less powerful with a top speed of only 62 miles per hour. More cargo space, more payload. Enough about Class 1 work vans, let's talk about Class 2, and there are a lot of them. I'll kiss Ford's ass again and say that the Ford Transit is a benchmark vehicle. So the Ford E-Transit is where we'll start. The rear-wheel drive electric powertrain of the E-Transit has more torque than the base gas engine, but less than the optional EcoBoost engine. It's offered in two wheelbases, three roof heights. The largest high-roof EL model can hold 487 cubic feet with a payload of 3,300 pounds. Standard battery is a modest 68 kilowatt hours, good for up to 126 miles of range for the smallest short wheelbase low-roof model. The largest EL gets about 108 miles of range from that same battery. It can DC fast charge at 115 kilowatts if necessary. Ford is creating quite the ecosystem with Ford Pro. It's more than just trucks. It includes charging stations, telematics, fleet management, and consultancy to help fleet managers make the transition. It's kind of like what Apple does with iPhones, MacBooks, and AirPods. They want you to become a loyal customer because all their stuff works well together. Oh yeah, the e-transit also comes as a cutaway where it is just the front cab and bodybuilders can add whatever they want. I want to talk about Mercedes next, but before I do, I want to talk about the car that I drove to the show because it relates to something in the e-sprinter. I'm on my way to the truck show. Actually, I'm charging this electric vehicle. It's a Tesla. And this one is a little different. Most electric vehicles on the road today use either NCM battery chemistry, that's nickel, cobalt, manganese, or NCA, nickel, cobalt, aluminum oxide. The nickel and cobalt gives them excellent energy density, so you get a lot of energy for 
not that much weight. So that's a good thing if you're trying to be mobile. This vehicle though is a standard range Tesla Model 3 that I'm using. It uses LFP, lithium iron phosphate battery chemistry. What's the difference? Well, it avoids using nickel and cobalt, which are expensive metals, and they've also gotten more expensive as demand has increased. On the downside, it's less energy dense, so the range of this vehicle isn't as good as other Model 3s or other electric vehicles in general, so that's gonna hurt me. It's also a little more sensitive to cold weather, so right now it's 30 degrees on my way from Detroit to Indianapolis, that's working against me too. The benefit though is that cost effectiveness and you can take these batteries up to 100% on a daily basis. They kind of don't care. They're a little more robust in that respect. So whereas uh, an NCM or an NCA battery, the owner's manual will tell you to take it to only 80% on a daily basis. This one, you just fill it up as much as you want and commercial vehicles find those two things very appealing, the ability to charge them up to 100% on a daily basis, and also the ability to be less expensive. Mercedes eSprinter is brand new, revealed about a month ago and on display at the work truck show. For clarification, the Sprinter and eSprinter are Mercedes and they are light duty trucks. Daimler trucks split off into a separate heavy duty truck company. That includes the brands Freightliner and Western Star, which are more familiar on US highways. The eSprinter goes head to head with the eTransit, offering a variety of configurations. While not quite as powerful as the Ford, even with the optional electric powertrain, it does feature a much larger battery that delivers about 200 miles of range. Coming soon will be an optional smaller, less expensive battery that features Anyone? Anyone? LFP? L LFP battery chemistry. That's right. These batteries will be made in partnership with CATL in Hungary and installed in eSprinters made in South Carolina. If you saw my first video or recall the news, Ford is building a battery plant in Michigan that will also use LFP battery design from CATL, a Chinese company, Ford announced that this battery will go into the Mach-E and the Lightning, but it has not confirmed that it will go into the E-Transit. We'll see about that. The Mercedes E-Sprinter holds as many cardboard boxes as the E-Transit, but rides on a longer wheelbase. What happened to Ford versus Chevy when it comes to trucks? Well, it's not Chevy that Ford competes with in this segment, it's Bright Drop. GM created this startup as an incubator for creative thinking. The Zevo 400 was on display. The model number refers to its cargo capacity. There's also a Zevo 600 available, but not on display. It's based on GM's Ultium platform. So if any specs sound similar to the Hummer EV or Silverado EV, that's not a coincidence. It's dual motor, all wheel drive, and has a much larger battery. GM batteries are constructed in modules, and the Bright Drop has 20 of them versus the Hummer, which has 24 modules. You would expect the range to be better than the E-Transit, and it is. Payload capacity is less, likely due in part to the extra battery it carries around. It still weighs in as a Class 2 truck. Like Ford Pro, Bright Drop offers support with fleet charging, infrastructure, and management software. They even developed an electrified connected pallet called Trace to help modernize fleet operations. GM Bright Drop isn't impressive, but with an extra motor and more batteries, I assume it costs more than the E-Transit and the E-Sprinter. GM only sells them to large fleets right now, so they do not advertise a base price. Rivian makes an electric delivery van, the EDV 700. It and Bright Drop, I think, are the two coolest looking vans. They were not at the work truck show because right now they have one customer, Amazon. And Amazon isn't happy about the slow pace of getting their vans. As I'm producing this video, word leaked that Amazon would be reducing their total order of vans and looking to buy from other manufacturers. That may not be totally bad news for Rivian as this would allow them to make more R1T and R1S trucks for retail customers. Where will Amazon get more vans from? Ram. At their press conference, they restated what they said at the Chicago Auto Show. 
They're working on an electric version of the Ram Promaster, and it would be delivered to Amazon before the end of 2023. Expectations are that it won't look much different than the regular Promaster. The Ram and the Fiat Ducato are essentially the same vehicle, which in Europe they've been producing the e Ducato for about two years. They could just bring that vehicle here, but I don't think so. The e Ducato has as much battery and range as the e Transit. The e Ducato is less powerful and DC charges slower. However, the electric powertrain was delivered by Solar Edge, which is a leader in inverters for solar and grid storage, but not an auto parts manufacturer. It would seem odd for Ram to just copy and paste this somewhat underwhelming European electric van versus taking the time to put something together that's more competitive. The Shift Group has different business units involved in work trucks and RVs. They created Blue Arc to pull together their talents and create a Class 3 electric van. Unlike other trucks, this truck features a state-of-the-art 800-volt architecture. Two battery sizes are offered. The largest delivers an EPA range of 200 miles. The fact that they are talking EPA numbers and not estimated range means they are serious about starting production later this year. It's a big van, more like a UPS truck in my neighborhood than the smaller Amazon vans. Holds up to 800 cubic feet of boxes and hauls up to 5,000 pounds. The body comes from Utilimaster, which is part of the same parent company. I got a chance to drive this truck, and it was really easy to drive with good visibility. The representatives said they tuned it to feel more like a combustion engine truck, less aggressive on the regenerative braking. They heard customers express concern about their drivers having to adjust to a different feel when going from one truck to another. Of course, if their customers want a more aggressive regenerative braking, it can be recalibrated to provide that different feel via software. Via Motors is a name you might recall. A decade ago, they were making plug-in hybrid conversions of Chevy pickups and vans. They stopped that and started working on an all-electric truck platform for class two through five applications. Their V-Trucks comes as either a fully enclosed cab chassis or as a cutaway, which allows them to be made into walk-through delivery vans. Choose from three different wheelbases and three different battery sizes, dual motor, all-wheel drive. It's quite a versatile platform allowing for many possibilities. The cab interior looks well-built finished and ready for production. They have received orders from Pegasus for 2,000 cutaway cabs that will be made into shuttle and school buses. Deliveries on those are expected next year. They also offer their platform without a cab. They call this their V-Drive. This was on display at the Morgan Olsen booth, their bodybuilder. Part of the JB Poindexter and Company, they've created a new business unit to focus on reimagining truck bodies for electric work vehicles. The Proxima takes the Via Motors V Drive skateboard and sits on it. Field of view for the driver is something that becomes very important as we get into larger vehicles like this, and there is a lot of glass surrounding the driver. Also at the Morgan Olsen booth was a reveal of the electric version of the C250 postal truck. And I'm mad. The U.S. Postal Service held on to the Long Life Vehicle, or LLV, too long. And so did Canada. After decades of spec writing, government oversight, and good old-fashioned bureaucracy, the U.S. eventually decided on this. <coughs> the NGDV, which I'm going to tell you stands for No Good Dork Vehicle. I bring this up because Canada, oh Canada, partnered with Morgan Olsen to make the C250. Based on a Ford F-150 chassis and custom bodywork, it, it's not sexy, but I don't, it looks good to me. I mean, the proportions are good. It's low and long. The round headlights give it some character, and the paint scheme they showed on the floor was really pretty. The truck they revealed is an electric version of that, and it will undergo evaluations and field use. Detailed specs and delivery details were not available at that time, but it is an all-wheel drive electric postal truck that we could have had here in the States. But we didn't. Moving on.
Earlier, I mentioned the tiny Centro Metro. Well, they also make the Logistar or LS300. Specs are actually quite good. This is a Chinese-made van. So they use the NEDC test procedure over there, which produces inflated range numbers compared to the WLTP, which is used in Europe. And those numbers are higher than the EPA test procedures that we use here. So the range they state could be significantly overstated. Lightning E-Motors makes an electric version of the Ford Transit. Why would you buy this over an E-Transit directly from Ford? Well, it has a larger battery and more range than the E-Transit. The extra capability puts it into a class three truck so it can carry more weight. Lightning E-Motors has found a niche until Ford and other OEMs decide to expand their range of electric truck capabilities good for them. If you saw my last video on light duty electric pickups, I mentioned Zev X. They also make an electric version of the Sprinter. Mullen is a cab over truck, but it is a light duty class three electric. This truck seems like it would work well in a large city. It can haul a good amount of weight. 130 miles of range is okay. This is the last vehicle I'll talk about in this video, but it is a hint at what I'll talk about in the next video. As a class three truck, this would qualify for a $7,500 commercial clean vehicle tax credit. Nice. However, a class four cab would qualify for much more, up to $40,000, 30% of the price or the difference between the electric model and the combustion model, whichever is less. Simply put, if you're going to buy a cab chassis or a cab over truck, it pays to move up to a medium duty truck for that extra tax credit. And unlike passenger EVs, you can buy for personal use. The commercial EVs do not have any qualification requirements where the vehicle is assembled or where the battery components and minerals come from. So pretty much every work truck qualifies. Fleet managers love to save money and thus the medium duty segment of trucks is also rapidly adding electric options. So like and subscribe this video if you want to check out the next video on medium duty trucks. In the meantime, thanks for watching and keep on trucking.